In this video, I'm going to explain how you can buy a business using other people's money. And you want to make sure you stay to the end because if you're an absolute beginner, you're going to need to get the resources that are at the end of the video so that they'll all make sense for your situation. So the first thing that you want to do when you're buying real estate with other people's money is to first identify the type of business you want to acquire because there's so many types of choices that you can make because all it is is really just focusing on where you're going to allocate all your effort and your resources. So if you're somebody who's an expert in a certain industry, focus on buying something in that industry you're an expert at. Because if you start doing something that you don't have any idea on how to do, you lack competition, you lack advantage from a comp competitive point of view. And the, the idea of niches and ecology, animals, you know, occupy a certain area and an environment. You're basically an animal in the capitalist system. So you don't want to put yourself in a position where you have a disadvantage for no reason. So all the years that in decades people have spent doing something, you go into that industry, you know nothing about it. You probably buy a business you know nothing about, get cheated in the acquisition of that business and end up suffering because of that. So make sure you just buy something that you understand how to buy and understand what your best skills are, are, are at. You know, that's the first thing. The second thing is look at the type of business you want to acquire. So when you found it, now try to find out how you can arrange the money so you can buy it with other people's money. I mean, you can use your own money if you want, but frankly, depending on your, your, your goals, if it's opportunity cost, because that money that you use to grow the business, you put it into buying the business. You know, there's sometimes there's no need if you're about to buy a business that you can completely buy with other people's money. And the way that you would go about it is finding those investors as early as possible that can help you give you the money to buy the business. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing is you, you have to understand that there are two types of, there, there are really two types of money, quote unquote money that you can find. The first type is equity. And the second type is debt. Equity and debt. So debt is money somebody loans you. Equity is money somebody gives you. And I'm gonna explain. Let's say you find a business that costs $1 million. It's an accounting company that you wanna buy. Somebody's gonna lend you $500,000 probably, you know, at an interest rate, you know, because of the cash flow of the business, then let's say the interest rate is 10%, just hypothetically speaking. I'm not saying it'd be 10%, I'm just saying this for easy numbers. So, you know, they lend you $500,000 and then you have to put down, you have to find the other $500,000 to complete the acquisition because the business costs $1 million. The interest rate of 10% means that like, let's say it's like 10 years, 10% 10, 10 interest rate, just a hypothetical situation. It would be way lower than that, but just hypothetical situation. The profits of the business would probably have to exceed that interest rate that you're going to be charged. So you probably have to pay 50K per, yeah, let's just say 50K per um, year for 10 years. So the pro it would be nice if the profits and based on where the, how much cash is in the business bank account and the profits that are coming in and how stable the business has been and all the past profit that the business has made. It'd be great if the profit was um, over that $50,000 per year so that you can not be stressed out when you're looking to buy that business. Because if you're buying a business and then it has only, like let's say it has only 70,000 in its bank account and the interest payments are $50,000 per year and then you're not including other costs to run the business, then it's gonna lose money in less than one year or less than two years rather, because it's, the bank accounts are gonna be empty and gonna be negative. So make sure that you're dealing with a business that's profitable that can afford the interest payments of a lender that you go and find. And then the second thing is the equity. You never have to put in all of your own money. You can use other people's money to find the equity for the deal, sure. But it'd be nice if you find equity. And uh, so instead of putting the $500,000 and you get the $500,000 loans and make the, to make the million dollar acquisition, you can actually use another investor instead of you to put that $500,000 down so that you have one lender that puts it $500,000 down and then another investor that puts the other $500,000 down. You can also split it where you put maybe $250,000, the investor puts $250,000 and the lender puts $500,000. You know, those are some options. And then the little known final option is getting the seller to lend you money to acquire the business. Sometimes sellers can actually lend you money to acquire the business for you. So you can have a bank that lends you, for example, $500,000. You can have the seller that lends you, for example, $200,000 from the cash flow of the business. 
And then you may need to put something, something down like a $300,000 in the investor. So these are some ways that deals get done. And try to negotiate a deal that can that is, number one, very profitable. Number two, you understand. And number three, is easy to fund. Because if you find a deal that you don't know anything about, you don't know how to fund, and is very, is very, very unprofitable, that's probably the worst type of deal you can get into. But if you just do the reverse of that, you find a deal that is in an industry that you know everything about, highly profitable, and very easy to fund, then it's probably easier to go. And one example of a deal that's easy to fund is, you know, deals that are attached to real estate because real estate are not, real estate's not really known in general for high cash flows compared to businesses, but it's very easy to find a lender for real estate because real estate are seen as very strong assets that are easy to lend to. If there's no real estate attached to it, it could be seen as something that's really um, much harder to lend to. So the amount of the percentage of the value of the business versus the loan amount that you'll find will probably be higher for deals with real estate attached than not. Hence why we're not saying we force people to buy real estate attached businesses, but it's something that can help because people can, you know, acquire deals with more money uh, or with, le with using less of their own money to do it. So that's pretty much it. And if this is something that you'd like to do or you're curious, make sure you just head to raise.com to learn more. Share, like, subscribe, just so you spread the free flow of information uh, about this this knowledge and um, very importantly, if you actually like to raise capital by reaching out to investors for that down payment, it's a very strict process. So make sure you talk to lawyers. Uh, you know, we work with a team of you know freelancers, lawyers, full time employees that do this for a living. We do this every day. We've done hundreds of these. So if this is something that you'd like to discuss, then.